Hello everyone, this is a video I wanted to make for a while for Nectar's Panorama CS12 control surface. Stay tuned. So Nectar created this about a year ago, just over a year ago, and it took a while to get it to market, but here we are. What you're seeing before you is a plugin called Automaton, and I've placed it here to show you how a traditional control surface would work, controlling plugins, and how this one works. But first I want to go over the basic features. It has transport controls, you can see, just like most zoom controls, hold shift to zoom horizontally and vertically, but it also has controls for tempo. Um, I'm currently using this tempo button, tempo knob, to control the jog wheel, but if you hold shift, you can switch it to anything you want, including gain. And so if I select this region, I'm now controlling region gain for that region. Really cool. It has, it has a scrub function, nudge, cycle, zoom, clip gain. Uh, but like I said, most of the time I have it set for the jog wheel. You can also access the jog wheel by holding either one of the forward or back buttons and just using the main data knob. Uh, that same knob can move the loop even while the song is playing. And if you hold loop, it holds the loop and moves it the whole loop, but not the playhead. <laughs> Does that make sense? This one moves just the loop. This one moves the loop and the playhead. Got it? All right. So you can do things like select the placement of the loop as well. Raise and hold shift and hit set R. Go to the beginning, shift and set L. And now that loop is around the guitar phrase. What I want to show you though is why this device is different outside of just the transport controls. So you're looking at that loop and I've placed a plugin that you've probably never seen before called Automaton on it. And that plugin is just an effects processor that adds, you know, uh, stutter effects, modulation and bit crush and a delay. It's got a sequencer that passes over the colored lines and dots you see. And when the white dots in the sequencer section hit the colored dots, the colored effects are activated. So let's see what that sounds like. So you can see that it's activating the effects as it passes over. If we go to the actual panorama controls and open up that plugin, you see I've modified it, but I want to show you what this would look like on an MCU device, one of the more traditional control surfaces you've probably seen, like the X-Touch or the Mackie MCU or even SSL uh, or Icon's control surfaces. They use the traditional Mackie control MCU protocol. And the problem with them is that even for a plugin like this with relatively few controls, you'll have eight knobs across the top of the screen on that control surface. And as you page through, you have to look for the control, the parameter you want to control. So if I want to control, let's say, bit crusher error, for example, I'll have to page through that to find the bit crusher error. Let's see if I can see that on the screen here. I think that's it there. Finally, I found it, right? And if I want to control, let's say, stutter pitch, then I'm going to page through until I see stutter pitch. Uh, wait, is that it there? Yeah, stutter pitch, right? And so each parameter is ordered one at a time alphabetically throughout the plugin. So that may not seem like a big deal, but let me show you what's different about this control surface. And then I'll show you why it can be a huge deal. I've created this map with a traditional look, but the main way I would use it is with the deep mapping. You'll see that that sequencer page, which I don't actually have to look at on screen because of the way this is set up. It, it only shows the buttons that I've assigned, the buttons I want to use. So you'll see six knobs here, plus the buttons that allow me to control any toggle switches and I can switch to the stutter and you'll see that the colors change to match the controls that are blue on the stutter page because I color them that way and the buttons including solo for that device uh, I'll show you it solos solo and if it was playing it would solo just the stutter effect and also you know the bit crusher in orange they replicate the delay in green so it's really easy to understand what you're manipulating with this control surface. And you can access all of the pages just by 
using the main data knob to go to any page. So I have a master section set up here with just three controls, but I don't want to look through them to find them. So I created a page for just those three controls, which makes it easy for me to go back and forth between any of the modules that I want to use at any time quickly. Uh, not just with the buttons, but with the main data knob, any of the pages that are available are quickly accessible. Let me show you why that's really important with maybe one or two other plugins. Shaperbox is one that really shows the power of this control surface. So if I activate the automation view here, so you can see the lane, this one control for, let's say, volume mid envelope ratio. So if I go look for that, it's down in the many hundreds. So let's see, we're still looking for it. There it is, mid envelope ratio. Um, what about the master mix? If I touch it, it'll jump to it here in the automation lane. But let's go look for that. And it's going to be way down. So if you're looking for this with a traditional control surface, you can understand that only eight of these controls can show up at a time. So you're going to be scrolling through many, many pages to get to this one, which I think is number 400 or something like that. This particular plugin has over 7,000 controls, and this is like in the 400s. So you can imagine that you're not going to want to press the next page button 300 times to get to this control just to control this one parameter. Instead, you'll just grab it with your mouse and change it and be done with it. And that diminishes the usability of a control surface. This control surface is useful even when you decide that you don't want to map all of these 7,000 controls that are available. Instead, you can just hit the select button, move that, you see the fader move, and now that control is available beneath the fader immediately or via the knob immediately. Any control I touch and move will become available to me on the knob or the fader using the select control. And that's for any plugin with assignable automation parameters anything at all. It makes it really easy to control things and they're immediately automatable. I could capture this automation right now. That's huge because that means for many of the plugins that I don't use a lot, I'm not going to go through the trouble of mapping them at all. When I need to automate them, which is true of this plugin very often when I use it for, you know, time effects or volume based effects or panning effects, I don't want all those controls. I don't need them. I don't need thousands or even 30 controls. I just want the one control I need to make a dynamic process happen for the song I'm working on. Let me show you another, a plugin I use regularly. This one also offers thousands of parameters. This one's called Shep's Omni Channel. It's a, a Swiss Army knife of a plugin. It's probably my favorite plugin on the planet right now as far as for processing audio channels. And it's different because it allows you to load a VST3 plugin within it as a host. And so when it's hosting plugins, it had to make automation space for that plugin. But what happens is if you were going to automate this secondary plugin within it by changing the value of one of its controls, then Logic isn't going to name that for you. It's not going to pass through this low gain control to Logic. Instead, it's just going to say whatever insert it is. So it's insert 30 for this low mid frequency gain and insert 24 for this. So because there are, like I said, 2000 controls, but I don't care with this device because I'm in select mode. And as soon as I touch it, I can just take control at any time and have real tactile, sensitive, comfortable control at any time. It's wonderful and it's immediate. So for that reason, a lot of the plugins, you won't even necessarily want to map, but in cases of plugins like this one, my favorite, which I did want to map, Wow, high level control. If you're looking at the screen, you can see that it's color coded and the things that you want to use a lot, like the EQ on this device, it jumps up with a traditional kind of SSL color code mapping. So the high frequency controls, you can see on screen, the high frequency control there. Again, is moving. I can select the kind of high frequency EQ I want to use. In this case, I change it to a parametric EQ. I can change it to a shelf and then the cue goes off. You get my point. It's easy to use at low gain, low mid, high mid, and high. It's easy to use. And then I can switch screens without having to page through parameters, control other parameters just by 
using the data knob to go to the input and output controls, to go to the de controls or the compressor controls. They're all here. You can see them. Let me turn this off so that doesn't distract you. But all the major controls you'd want for the compressor right here, the de controls, even turning them off and on, activating the compressor. It's really, really the side chain, I should say. It's really, really, really fast being able to use this this way. Here's the compressor on and off switch. It's really, really easy to use. So much is on screen. It's well spaced out. And that's the power of this device. It's very powerful. It's very easy to use. It's very easy friendly. And even when a plugin is not mapped, it's easy to use because, again, you can just hit select, touch the knob, and then that knob is under your control with the knob or the fader. Faders, touch it. Now you've got really easy control immediately, ready to automate, ready to change. This is true for synthesizers as well. So for most of the synths that I thought I was going to map, I ended up not mapping. I will note, however, that there is an issue with synths, and that is that synthesizers and keyboards, they don't offer the deep level mapping as you see with the audio plugins. Instead, they use Logic's built-in smart controls to, to control the software instrument plugins. Now, it's not horrible, obviously, it works. It works very well, actually. You have the controls that I want, I've added for Analog Lab from Arturia, but it doesn't offer the many, many pages of controls. It just offers three pages of controls and about eight buttons. And I would love to see controls be expanded. The problem with it is that Logic itself treats audio instruments differently than it does the insert plugins. So you can see that they're on their own slot. And the instrument is kept separately from all the other inserts. My hope is that in spite of that, they can create a mode much like you have on other control surfaces, which is an instrument mode. They have plug-in mode and they have instrument modes. And so rather than using smart control mode, I wish we could have an instrument mode or a shift plus channel mode with instrument mode and offer that same nectarine level control that you're seeing with the other devices. Because I want more than like 36 controls. And I'd love to have pages for things like Omnisphere where there are hundreds of controls. And I want to take groups of controls like filter sections, oscillator sections, you know, panning controls and level controls for oscillators and have them all separated into easy to access groups so that when I'm working with synths, they can be uniform. Once again, though, I want to say that I am super pleased. This is the best control surface I've ever used. And I want to tell you that my experience is really vast with control surfaces. I've owned seven control surfaces and I sent them back. I own four at this moment. And I've also used the most popular and expensive control surfaces from Avid, including the S6 and S1. I've used Icon, SSL, and this does more with respect to plug-in manipulation than any of them. The SSL does offer the kind of select focus mode. Icon does as well. Avid does not offer a focus mode. They have a deep level integration and mapping of plugins which is kind of cool, but not as cool as this because it doesn't offer the paging system that I showed you before. This kind of mapping with the controls that I need regularly is just wonderful. Let me show you one more plugin. This is RC20, a plugin I recently mapped and sent to Nectar. And usually it's a plugin that I set and leave alone. But because of the deep level mapping here, it's now a plugin that I will regularly manipulate and automate to add dynamics to the piece because it's now so easy to control and to switch menus to match the color coding of the plugins to the color coding on the buttons. It makes it really easy to see what's available at any time and to both activate those things and to functionally make use of them really quickly. This is very different from the way other control services work because I'm never confused about what I'm trying to manipulate at any time. I'm never in a place where I'm forgetting what I'm trying to control. The ability to quickly manipulate this plugin is very different. Everything else I've used required menu diving, long, long, slow access issues with the menus. And that meant that I didn't use menus. I, I didn't use the control surfaces to the greatest capability. It just took too long and the mouse was just faster.
where this device, again, I can either use the device that's deep map or even where it isn't deep map, I can just hit select, touch a control with my mouse, and now I have deep level control, really easy access to controls. It's just really hard to explain how much fun it is to do that, especially when immediately I can automate that control. There's also advanced automation controls here. If you hold the automation button and drag, you can reach all of these other automation modes. I won't go through them here because this video is already long, but single point fader automation is really cool. Auto latch is cool. These are available on other control surfaces, but they're not that easy to use as they are with this one. And then the traditional touch latch right, and they're still kind of auto because when I set it to auto, if I move a control while the song is playing, it'll automatically use latch mode. And when I stop touching the control, it turns it back off. So I'm not messing up what I've just done. I think that's about it. I think that's enough for today. If you have questions about this device, any question at all, please contact me. Feel free to reach out. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to support me on Patreon. It really helps the channel. Much love.